problem right here here this question is asking in the common gate amplifier circuit of the figure p8.55 q2 and q3 are matched and kn prime w over l n is equal to kp prime w over l p which is equal to 4 milliampere per voltage square and all transistor have vt is equal to 0 0.8 voltage va is equal to 20 voltage and uh, in this video i'm just going to do the a part and uh, in my upcoming video i will do each of the other parts okay so let's look at the a part here what is the a part is asking the a part is asking next uh, the signal v is a small sinusoidal signal with no dc component and uh, a part is saying neglecting the effect of va find the dc train current of q1 and the required value of v by s okay so let's see how we can find it okay first reducing size okay so first we had to they asking us to find out the dc train current of q1 so that is basically right here um, and if you notice this is a p mos on the top and in the bottom we have a n mos you can see that by arrow pointing in part that's a p mos arrow pointing out what is n mos and the current passed through this q1 is the id1 this is what we are interested in and in order to find this one we have to see what is the current coming in first of all uh, here we have 100 microampere current in the train if you uh, this is a pmos so we mentioned the train current on the bottom so that is 100 microampere right here and uh, this is the exact current we are going to have right here as well because you see this uh, this voltage is same for both of them and uh, this is matched it means it's going to form a current mirror so whatever the current here is exactly the current we are going to have right here so this is our i reference in this case i reference is going to be equal to whatever the current flow through this that is you can say id2 and id2 is going to be equal to id1 because there's no current flow in the gate for the MOSFET transistor so whatever the whatever go through the source comes to the train and here the train current is straightforward for the q2 that is 100 microampere because it's matched and the exact current gonna fall flow, flow to the third one that is id1 therefore and id2 is equal to id1 therefore which is equal to here we can say that is 100 microampere therefore we can say id1 is equal to 100 microampere so this is kind of straightforward once it's matched you know automatically know that it's, it's a current mirror whatever the reference current is going to be the exact current you're going to have in most places okay unless they differ with over length ratio is different for something and if they mention like that then you have to calculate other than that it's going to be the same current okay so that's the train current value and then uh, the next question is asking train current of the q1 and the required value of v bias uh, if you notice the v bias is right here this voltage right here the gate voltage of the q1 so we have to find this one out in order to find this one out you can apply kvl around here so when you apply kvl that is like uh, v if you take this side like this then this v bias minus and here we will have a vgs gate to source voltage this one here plus minus and here we have vgs we can say vgs1 since it's q1 so minus vgs1 minus 50 times or we can, you can say rs because there's a source resistance rs times id should be equal to zero why we call id I, it's going to be id1 because there's no current flow in the gate so whatever the current in the train the exact same current goes through the source as well so the current goes through the 50 ohm resistance is also id1 and that is equal to zero so we are interested in v bias and if you rearrange this equation, this is V bias is equal to 
VGS1 plus RSID1. Okay, we have RS available, ID1 available. We don't know the VGS1, but we know the ID1. From this one, we can find out the VGS1 because uh, if you look at the current equation, let's do the current equation so you can see it. This is the uh, NMOS right here. So we can say ID1 is equal to, you can say half mu and COX, W over L times N, V over drive square, V over drive is nothing but VGS minus V threshold. If it's ID1, then we have to take the VGS1 right here, and then VT is for the NMOS VTN, whole square. ID1 is 100 micro, that is known, and then half time mu and cx over w over l. <coughs> mu, and, <coughs> mu and cx can be written as kn prime as well. kn prime is equal to mu and cx, so that's the only thing we have to know. And that is 4 milliampere per voltage square. So here, instead of all these things, we can replace that one with 4 milli. <coughs> and VGS1 is the unknown variable and then for the N MOSFET okay so they are saying all the transistor have 0 0.8 voltage so it doesn't matter N or P MOSFET all of them have 0 0.8 so it means that this is going to be 0 0.8 voltage right here square and here you have to just rearrange and solve for VGS1 if you solve for it you will end up getting 1.024 voltage now once you have VGS1, our main purpose is to find out the VV bias. We didn't know the VGS1, now we calculate the VGS1, that's 1.024, plug that one in this equation, 1.024 plus RS is the source resistance, that is 50 ohm resistance, times the ID1, that's 100 micro, and if you calculate this one, you are going to end up getting 1.029 voltage. And that's the V bias voltage. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe my channel. See you guys on my next video.